All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are actually doing our 300th mod video. And for such a special occasion, I figured I'd finally get around to a mod I've been meaning to look at for a while now, and that's Deep Space Exploration Vessels, which is being made by form user Angel125. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely selection of parts that allow you to build NASA-inspired ships here in Kerbal Space Program. And by NASA-inspired, uh, basically these are parts that are styled after the variety of different uh, theoretical, someday off in the distant future dream missions that NASA occasionally draws up plans for, which are always such cool looking ships. And now we can make them here. So let's jump right into the vehicle assembly building for, oh boy, the 300th time. I can't believe that. Wow, we've made a lot of mod videos. Now, I accidentally already filtered these things earlier when I was going through stuff, uh, but we don't technically need to use this mod filter today as Angel125 does add in a Deep Space Exploration Vessels button here that we could use, but uh, I've actually come to very much enjoy this mod filter and it allows us to go through each individual tab so you guys can get a much better idea of uh, exactly where all these parts go in the grand scheme of things. So let's turn, uh, well first actually grab a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison and then turn off the squad parts. There we go and we're going to want to move this thing a little bit up here and then look at the first part which is the Clydesdale OCP command pod which is gorgeous. This thing will hold a maximum of nine Kerbals, minimum of two, has your typical data transmitter, curb net access, reaction wheel, SAS, crew report, a thousand electric charge, and finally 200 monopropellant. This thing is a beautiful command pod that I really do truly love. I mean, the model isn't exactly the most fancy thing ever. It's straight line, then not straight line. Well, actually, technically it is straight, just, you know, at an angle rather than up and down. But yes, the texturing on it though is simply beautiful. I really do love the sort of uh, stock-like feel to it. And of course, the interior. Once you guys see the interior of this thing, you will know exactly why I love this part to death. It is very, very cool. Now the second command pod we have is more or less identical to uh, this one in every single way. Again, it holds nine crew, minimum of two, has all the same stuff in here, even down to the same size of battery and monopropellant. The only difference is it's an inline command pod and also does have a unique interior, which of course plays off of the inline idea. Very, very cool. Again, nine Kerbals, so you're going to get a lot of people in these things. And then finally, we have an unmanned command pod, the D2 instrument unit, which has your typical data transmitter, curb net access, reaction wheel, SAS. This one, though, only has a battery of 900 electric charge and no monopropellant like the others. As of course, well, it doesn't really need it. It's just a nice little unmanned command pod there. Very, very cool. Now we're going to move on to fuel tanks. I'm going to try and go through these quick uh, because, well, we have a lot of parts to go through. That and, well, there's not a lot to talk about. Normally I tell you exactly how much the size of each of these holds, but the thing is, notice... WBI Convertible Storage. This is one of the Wild Blue Industries things here, and uh, Angel125 always likes to use reconfigurable tanks so that you can change these really to whatever you desire. So really it comes down to style of tank. So for the first one here, the FLM100, it is a pretty nice radial tank, very similar to the radial stock tanks we already have. And if we do right click on it, as you can see here, we have the reconfigurable figure storage button that I was uh, mentioning and it will bring you into this UI so you can then change this tank to any of these community resource resources that are added in and uh, yeah you have a lot of options everything from the standard xenon gas to uh, modded rocket parts minerals liquid hydrogen all sorts of crazy things which is very very cool I really do love this UI my one problem with it is even if, like, say, we're over this part here and I try and click a button, 
I, I still click the part behind it, which can be a little bit annoying, but so long as you avoid that, you should be good. So, uh, yeah, whenever you do want to configure something, maybe just move the window around and then click whatever it is you want, hit reconfigure, and then close it, and that tank is now coolant rather than whatever it was before. I didn't pay attention. Uh, so, yeah, it'll all be different sizes depending on the resource. It really comes down to styles. So we have, of course, this radial tank. We then have a variety variety of either radial or inline tanks and these ones right here come in the 1.25 size and have a small medium and a large part right there as you can see we then have uh, another small medium large situation right here where we have these small uh, the medium, and then the large right there, and then finally a another orange tank where we have the small the medium, and finally, oh boy, here we go, the large. And besides the look, of course, as you can see, they are of the different sizes. We have the 1.25, the 2.5, and then the 3.75s up here. Very cool tanks, though, and very nice to have all the variety, and of course, any one of them can be reconfigured to whatever you desire. You just gotta watch out with that UI. Now let's pop all these things back into here and go down to engines, where we have three. The first one being the Tesla ArcJet rocket motor, which, interestingly, can be put radially or, of course, in line right there, and is a pretty beautiful little part. If we zoom in, there we go. Very nice looking, very good detailing on it. And uh, this engine will use electric charge and liquid hydrogen, and it'll use a lot of electric charge at 310 per second and a liquid hydrogen 3.45 to only produce 12 kilonewtons in vacuum, which is interesting. Hmm, I've never really used this engine. I don't care for it much. Now, the next engine. Oh, I love this engine. This is the Viper Nuclear Aerospike, which can only be put in line. And uh, not only is it a nuclear engine, but it's, well, a nuclear aerospike with gimbling, four degrees of gimbling, and it can actually produce a fair amount of thrust. Now, of course, it's nuclear. It's really meant for vacuum. And as you can see here, we have two different engine modes. You can either use just straight up liquid fuel for a maximum of 70 kilonewtons in vacuum, or you can use a combination of liquid fuel and oxidizer to produce 210 kilonewtons in vacuum. Very, very nice. A very cool engine. I do enjoy it, but oh, you want to go deep space, so you're going to need the supernova fusion engine. Oh, oh, I love this thing. This is glorious. Oh, it's just beautiful. And it's a pretty impressive engine at that. Now it has a built-in alternator producing 12 electric charge per second, and again has two different engine modes. Now if you have liquid hydrogen, you can just use that and you'll get 900 kilonewtons in vacuum. But if you have fusion pellets and water, which, uh, you know, you can use it as a, at a lower rate, it's far more easy to get in other places, you'll get uh, 600 kilonewtons in vacuum. So it's a little bit less, but the, the resources tend to be a bit easier on this one, whereas liquid hydrogen, you're using a lot of liquid hydrogen per second. So the uh, more economic fusion pellets or the much more power of the liquid hydrogen. Other than that, does have some gimbling and uh, yeah, very, very nice thing. I love this engine. It is quite cool. Now, next in command and control, we do have some lovely little RCS ports here, either a singular or a uh, five nozzle one. Yeah, that, that works. That's that's not how you say that at all, but yes, there we go. Lovely little uh, RCS thrusters, though rather than using monopropellant, these will use electric charge and liquid hydrogen and will give you a pretty good thrust power. Now, next, we need to go to structural where <laughs> we got a lot of parts here. So zooming back out, angling down. First one we have here is the D2 adapter, which takes it from the 3.75 down to 1.25. So it's a pretty dramatic shift between the two, but it is quite nice. We 
then have a variety of trusses here. Oh boy, big truss. This is very large hexagonal uh, truss, which can, uh, you can actually put things on the inside very easily, which is quite cool. We have them in various sizes, as you can see here, a small, medium, and large, just like with the tanks earlier, which is quite cool. We then have a similar situation with just a thinner version. So there we go. It's uh, half the size, roughly. And we have the small, the medium one here, and, or well, rather the large, the medium, and then the small right there. And actually, even smaller. There we go. That one has uh, the tiniest of them. Very nice little part. Very cool indeed. Now we can also, with these various trusses, use uh, things like hex nodes, so you can go off in different directions. We then have a hex T, which actually is also a four-way node, because there's a node down here for some reason, which kind of seems awkward to me, but it is there if you so desire to do something like that. I mean, that that's something perfectly acceptable you can do. We then also have a fun little uh, truss that goes between the two sizes, so the large larger and smaller hexagonal trusses. We then also have an adapter that takes it from the hexagonal design back to round shape. And then we have a uh, wonderful landing frame here, which is quite nice. So you can put this in line on a lander and then have, say, put some engines right there. You can see we have the attachment points, two on that side and one on this other side in the center. Very, very cool. And you can actually reconfigure it to another form so uh, either from a landing leg frame, so that's what we have right now, so you can put some landing legs on the side, to an engine frame, which, I mean, just changes around the frame. There we go, very cool part. We then have a very interesting mini decoupler, which I do quite like because you can radially attach this thing anywhere, and then, you know, just, oh, I probably should have grabbed a smaller piece. There we go, and then attach it right to it to uh, sort of jet stuff off into other directions. Very, very fun and interesting little part. And of course, a decoupler with your typical things that go along with that. We then have the saddle truss, which comes again in three sizes, the large, the uh, medium, and the small. And these are quite cool because, of course, they have a more well, a larger internal area you can work with, and as you can see, a lot of attachment points on the inside for you to put things, which uh, we actually have some very specific parts you can put there once we do get down into the payload section. And the final thing is a radial truss mount, which is a hexagonal thing with some bars going down. There we go, there is all of these structural bits and bobs. So down to coupling where we have two, a large 3.75 docking ring, and then a smaller sort of 2.5 hexagonal one. Very nice and very fun to put on the hexagonal trusses. I do enjoy that. Now then when we get into payload, actually let's grab one of the uh, bu -bu -bu -bum, uh, structural parts right there. Excellent. Then back to payload. Now we have some fun little service bays here. The first one, as you can see, is nice and hollow on the inside for you to put stuff. We then have a larger one here, which of course can be opened up for you to put things in there. We then have a variety of cargo boxes, which as you can see can either be put radially or in line through an attachment point, which uh, we then have this series, the K2, and then the MC series, which comes in a small, a not quite as small, a uh, bit bigger to maximum size. There we go. Uh, just different size containers, all of which can be reconfigured to whatever sort of resource you do want them to hold. And then we also have tanks specifically made for inside the saddle container or the saddle trusses here. So we have a saddle tank and then a storage wedge, which as you can see fits quite nicely in there for you to then put in some uh, things that are made more for in line parts. Very, very cool. I do enjoy them all. We have nothing in aerodynamics, nothing in ground. Thermal, on the other hand, we do get to some nice radiators. We have this graphene radiator right here, which if we do extend, very cool. I love the nice jet black color. We then also have a hot plate radiator. I about said regulator there, and it came out very oddly. There we go. Lovely retractable radiator. Very nice. Let's pop these off. 
and then head into electrical where we actually have four different generators and one of the reasons I actually came to looking at this mod today was because this is newly added as of the most recent update the safer generator which is quite cool now it has its own built-in active radiator which will use 1.5 electric charge per minute but that that pales in comparison to if you put in some enriched uranium at 0.1 per day it'll create 0.07 7 depleted uranium as waste but 125 electric charge per second very very cool reactor built in a radiator to keep it nice and cool overall just a very awesome part i do like it and it's very cool looking as well we then have a series of the WBR uh, generators here. We have a small, a medium, and large. You might be catching on to a common theme here with a lot of parts. Now, the WBR-1 Pineapple will take fusion pellets and create 3,000 electric charge per second. The Mandarin, the medium, will produce 1,400 per second. And the WBR-3 Croup will produce just a mere 400 per second. All very, very cool, very awesome parts. I do like them. In communication, we do have a AE35 communication array, which is quite a nice little thing. And uh, yeah, has an active scanner that you can use for, of course, you know, scanning for resources, but is also a data transmitter, curb net access. But yes, like I said, is also an orbital surveyor. So you can find all your resources you need with this as well as communicate them back to base. Now, next in science, we have a science module, which fits nicely in line, has an interior view, very cool, and will hold four Kerbals, and will act as a standard science lab. Now, in utility, we have a couple of fun things here. We have a greenhouse module, which, of course, if you do have various life support mods installed, it will help produce food. Uh, we also have the Habitat module, which is compatible with uh, TAC life support and other various life support mods. And uh, both of the, well, actually, the Greenhouse module will hold four Kerbals. The Habitat will hold six. So even without those life support mods, they are still worth it as they hold some good people. And we also have a Cryo Shelter, which uses the Deep Freeze mod, where you can cryogenically freeze your Kerbals so they don't use resources. But even if you don't have Deep Freeze installed, this is still an awesome container because it holds 12 Kerbals overall. Very, very fun. We then also have a series of uh, plasma screen TVs you can go with, which um, I don't really see the purpose. I guess if you have the K Kerbal operating system, I guess they're useful for something. For me, though, I use them for nothing. We then have the MassCon Ballast Module, which is a magical device that can change mass of itself to try and balance out ships. So if you're very front heavy on your ship, you can pop one of these on the back, go to Edit Mass, and make the back end heavier. It's a very interesting part. Personally, I've never used it, but I can definitely see the usefulness. The next thing, which I think is my favorite part, is the D2 Central refuge which will hold 12 kerbals overall it has its own built-in science lab and uh yeah it is a rotating section where you can extend those bits and bobs onto the sides to create gravity for your kerbals very very cool it does rotate and yeah awesome awesome thing now the next one in here is well and actually the last part is the compact isru converter now we're actually going to bring back the um squad parts real quick because it actually took me a while to figure out that oh this is actually a mod part as so we have the modded part and here is the stock version so it's basically just a smaller version of the convertitron 250 uh, so yes but it'll serve the same purpose as a resource converter uh but can also produce some of the modded material so say for instance you take water or minerals and electric charge you can create coolant and yes yeah, so it'll it'll be able to produce other materials that normally you can't produce with the standard Convertotrons. So this will produce your modded resources. And that is it of the parts. So let's actually jump to the tracking station where we can take a look at a ship that I built earlier, which again, as usual, is a ship that I just made in about five or ten minutes or so, just to kind of show off what you can do 
with a little bit of time. So with a lot more time and a lot more creativity, you guys could produce something far more interesting. Now, even with just a couple of minutes, I really, really love this thing. Let's extend the arm on this baby and watch as it unfurls itself. Very, very cool. I do always enjoy a good rotating section. And hold on, it still has to extend. Telescoping, there we go. Good, good. Aha, and now we, we, we spin. Start centrifuge. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Now let's actually turn on the uh, SAS is on. Let's turn on RCS. Make sure we're all face pro grade. There are the uh, new RCS thrusters going using the liquid hydrogen and electric charge. Very cool little thrusters. I do like them. And there we go. Here is our lovely, lovely ship. I really do like this thing. We've got, uh, you know, the command pods up here, both of them, because, well, I like both of them. Uh, we have a cryo section back here. We've got a number of generators, the Mandarin version for providing a lot of electricity. Some nice storage tanks here for whatever. And, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of cool graphene radiators, great parts, all you know, to make a great little deep space vessel. Now, like I said, there are some beautiful interiors to this, so let's take a look at, of course, our main command pod. We have the uh, emergency response, or emergency multi-purpose hologram. Wow, I can read. Why did I think response? There we go. And yes, a lovely cockpit in here. Beautiful giant windows. Ooh, God, I put the thruster in the wrong place there. <laughs> Hello, RCS, right on the window. Lovely. All right, so we can switch to the other pilot here. Very nice, beautiful views. Our, I guess, captain sitting in the center. Clearly Jebediah. And then we got some people playing Pong here in the back. Now, if you do have... Hold on, let me actually look at my other screen real quick. Roster prop monitor. Uh, these, I would assume, have stuff on them. I did not install raster prop monitor, though. Uh, but if you do have it, this will probably look far more impressive. But for now, it's Pong. We got another Pong over here. And then... Uh, the top area. We got, you know, a lovely little uh, crew section here, which is very, very nice. I think this is uh, crew member six. Yes, five downstairs. So six, seven, eight. This person just kind of in the storage room. And then uh, number nine. Well, clearly he's in HAL. Lovely. Now, the other command pod, similar sort of setup here with the uh, command crew, but as you can see, we don't have the nice curve window in front. Uh, we are in line, of course, but if we get through our bridge crew, there we go, a much larger sort of rear area where they have a much larger table with snacks, plenty of things. Uh, th yes, the unit is fine, Dave. Damn you, HAL. Damn you. And then we'll go through them and then head in to the rotating section. Each one of the rotating sections has an interior. And oh my, look outside. It's just going around and round and round. Awesome. So there we go. We got four people in this one. Nice little snack break room. We've got some uh, people doing some things, some experiments. We've got more experiments. We have what looks like some sort of bio lab. Beautiful, all spinning, making me dizzy. We have a cargo area, still making me dizzy. And then there we go. We're now in the cryo unit where we have all 12 of these Kerbals waiting for the deep freeze. There we are. And back to our bridge. Excellent. Ah, oh, I love this mod. So many great parts for making very, very cool ships. And most importantly, some, you know, just awesome deep space missions that you could try to do. I mean, come on, who doesn't want all these awesome parts for building just crazy ships? Imagine all the things you could create with all those trusses and different sort of uh, command and control materials, or modules rather, and just great engines, great tanks. Overall, it is a beautiful mod that you could make a whole heck of a lot of ships out of. And, uh, yeah, so if you'd like to check it out for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as usual. And I definitely, definitely recommend to go and have a look. But that is going to be it for today, folks. I hope you have enjoyed our 300th mod episode for Kerbal Space Program. And that just gives you an idea of how many mods there are for this game. I've done 300 of them. And I've barely scratched the surface, folks. But that is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a go. Oh, actually, I should probably ignite the engine before I leave so you can see that. There we go. Beautiful plasma trail. Awesome. 
And now that's it. <laughs> Later, folks.